Hey, welcome back, Zero K fans, to the 2015, 2016 August 1v1 tournament. Going to be doing Nemo versus Capricious, who did not wait for me, despite the fact that there was a lot of stuff going on with the tournament. Switched rooms on me. It's like, seriously, I need to cast people here, and you're the top players, so I'm casting you guys. Anyway. Here we go. Capricious going for tanks, and having to deal with quite a bit of... Where's the... There we go. He has played this game uh, before. Tanks versus light vehicles. Okay, there we go. And some error from Nemor as well. Very rapidly error. With only 12 metal and... Yeah, wow. Switched immediately to error. Capricious, on the other hand, taking most of the map. So this is going very well for Capricious right off the bat. He's Capricious almost... Has... Al he has already won. Yeah, there's some Scorchers that came around back. But... 38 versus... Levelers are nice, but... Uh... Yeah, we saw this problem but before. With Shatcher versus Nemor, Nemor does not seem to expand very rapidly. I mean, they have two Masons, but the Masons are going together rather than splitting apart and taking as much of the map as possible. And when you're mm. playing Red Common in particular, you have to be expanding quickly. Otherwise, you're going to get overwhelmed, and Capricious has already taken most of the map. Now, with Hacksaws being built up too, the Ravens really can't do much. Yeah, it's very short range, though, so... Uh, yeah, Nemor is so focused on their main base. They're not building up anything. Like, they need to split their masons. need to send one over to the north center and one over to the east center. And all of that with just four panthers. Yeah. No, he lost He lost a couple already. Now he can start bombing those mexes. Yeah, nice. Taking out wield Wilder. That's good. That is exactly what they need to do, and then take out metal extractors too. But yeah, taking out constructors is the key the thing. The trucks are kind of hard counter to, <laughs> to uh, air. Well, the one thing Nemor has right now is that Capricious is focusing heavily on anti-air. But even with that, I don't know, I feel like Capricious is going to be focusing on anti-air for the right reasons. Nemor is still building air units. Building a few levelers here and there, but I don't think it's going to make a huge difference right now. Some damage being dealt, mm. though. Scorchers, do your thing. Don't go through the center, that's not your thing. Well, okay, the Scorchers are moving to die. Scorchers are sick of life. Well, the thing is, he has seen what's in the top and bottom of part of the map, and he knows there are no turrets, so he can just send one Scorcher. Ah, yeah, that's what's happening. It's all working out. And the Copperhead uh, goes out the Copperhead down. To, to, he didn't lose a bomber. Yeah, and Scorch is doing some damage, too. I'm gonna do a lot of damage, though. Like, a remarkable amount of damage is gonna have to be dealt here to actually put a dent in Capricious' forces. Well, he doesn't have to. Look, he can just crash those uh, nano turrets and uh, anti-air in the base with just two Scorchers. Oh, There's yeah. absolutely nothing. Oh, wow, you're right! They're actually... You're... Yeah, it's just a hacksaw. Now, bombing a radar tower is not the most <laughs> efficient use of a... No, there are more oh productive boy. ways to commit suicide, but that... Still... The panther oh. might be just in time. The panther was just in time. Scorchers can't survive. Panther's pretty much hard counter Scorchers, so that's... Ah, that sucks. They'd gone for the hacks off first, that would have been a great opening. Like, had the hacks been taken uh... out, then the bombers could have come in and torn them to shreds. Still avoiding the hacksaw. That bomber is in an okay position. I'm not sure what he's here factory. to do. Factory and die. There's no point bombing a factory. Expensive. No, especially factories not are not, it's not. Only 600 metal. Yeah, it looks like Capricious is. Oh, chainsaw as well. And a cloaky oh. butt factory mid map. Yeah. I don't we'll know what see. Nemor can really do here. I mean, that was their chance. The Slasher, or the Scorcher, getting rid of the Hacksaw, allowing for bombers to get in and wipe out the Caretakers. He really lost his opportunity to clean up the, the corners of the map. I think that was the only opportunity they had. I mean, Capricious is a really good player. When you're fighting at this level, you basically get one shot. Like, unless you're able to make more opportunities for yourself, you basically get one... If you get a lucky shot like that, that's it. You have to make the most of it. Because your opponent is doing everything they can to stop you from getting in and actually doing damage. 
And so if you manage to do it, that might be the only chance you get. And you have to take advantage of it. And unfortunately, yeah. Nemo didn't manage to do so. And more Scorches coming over to the north, trying to deal with another... Trying to deal another blow. There just isn't the ready firepower to do that. I mean... Scorches are trying, but Nemo is so behind economically. Precious has like five times the economy. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really matter. I mean, Capricious is certainly going to lose something. It's just, who cares? Although, it looks like I don't know, the Scorch is going in for the uh, commander. Really a commander dive? It's not the time to trade. No, I'm going for, no, fusion dive. Not even that. No, because, okay, the fusion will explode and blow up some of the caretakers, but so what? Capricious has so much extra energy that the fusion being destroyed isn't a big deal. Compared to Nemor, it's not a big deal at all. Like, yeah, if Nemor had 50 metal per second, it'd be fine. And Scorcher trying to get rid of the factory. Should be able oh, to do so, actually. doing a good job at it. <laughs> yeah, that factory's going down. So, Stuart has... Hero sorry, Nemor has that down. At least okay. the Hero Scorcher. Yes, the Hero Scorcher did his job heroing. <laughs> Unfortunately, Capricious has the map. And Nemor... We saw this before. Nemor has one corner of the map. And Capricious, or not Capricious, Kshatri in the other case, has everything else. And that's how the game ends. Because Nemor does not have the resources to get out of here. No, he doesn't. And he also knows that he doesn't, because he has a filter. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah, well, well played. Too bad we missed the start of the game, but... Uh... That kind of sucks, but I think we we saw the real key play. And the key yep. attempted play of Nemor. Which didn't quite work out. So I think this might actually knock Nemor out of the top four. Yeah, I think so too. It's really hard to say. It, it The thing is, top four is going to be contested now. Which kind of sucks, because like after four rounds, top four was totally solid. Like You could say, oh, these are top four. Because they were all 3-1. And now it's contested. Hmm. What's the metal income? Oh, wow, yeah, Nemor basically... They plateaued at 15 or so. Bit of reclaim, but basically plateaued at 15. Yeah, Nemor just does not expand enough. Alright. So... See what else we can find for games. Oh, I see. Feld okay, so Feldos was given a tie with Orphelius. That's how they sorted it out. And Clone apparently is playing Stuart for real. Capricious beat Nemor. Nemor's still apparently oh, possibly in top four. Depends on who wins between Iken, Zigero, and Spri Oh, no, never mind. Yeah, Nemor and possibly Iken, Zigero, and Sprang all together. Still don't get it how this works out. I still don't get it. Not cleanly. Capricious is going forward. Kshatriya is most likely going forward. Nemor at 3-2 is going to be contesting it with a few others. If you give Orphelius and fail us a tie... Well, it will keep failed us in the top four. Yeah, fail toss is guaranteed top four. Kshatriya is possible top four if Kshatriya wins against Ikens. Capricious is top four. And then fourth place is going to be hotly contested because it doesn't matter who wins. Like, one of Sigero and Sprang is going to win, and Ikens might win. So it's either going to be a two way tie or a three way tie with Nemor. The thing is, what if Feldas would have lost the game and he would have been free two? Would've, yeah, it would have been contested as well. And now he uh, stays out of uh, uh, the tie. Uh, oh well. You stopped uh, the stream, right? I haven't stopped the stream. No? Still going. Uh, I mean, do you keep... Um, I'm, do. I'm just thinking what game to catch up on. Okay. So I think... 
this point... Yeah, I guess Kshatriya is... Actually... Hmm... I feel like Zagato and Sprang is going to be interesting to check out. Just to see how it's shaping up. Because I know that Kshatriya is likely winning, but it's like Kshatriya is probably going to win. But Zagato and Sprang, like whoever wins that is going to be tied for fourth place. I feel like that's more interesting. I might be totally off base, but I feel like that is much more interesting. Right. See how this goes. I'm almost there. Yeah, I'm just catching up to the game. No good attack by Spring. He kills Sigurdos Victory. Oh, what? And it's the That's one the off six minute mark. Wow, okay, let's see how this goes. So. Oh, yeah, no, he's doing the, the the GBC thing, making both light vehicles. Oh, Ravagers and Ravagers. Okay, I'm only at four minutes in, but yeah, Sprung going for a lot of these slashers. <laughs> Rick here, or what are they called? Merles, Impaler. Yeah, Impalers. Okay, so slashers to the north. Sprung taking out the north. Wow, taking the north really strong. It's wow, that's a lot of Ravagers. Ravager with slasher support. That's, I don't know if that's so much a TBC thing. The Ravagers, yeah, but the Slash support's new. And Sigero at the same time trying to deal some damage around the back, but not able to do so. And I see what you mean. Sprung really cutting around Sigero here. Sigero doesn't have a whole lot to work with, but at the same time doing what they can. Wow, that's nice Glaive Micro around the Ravagers. And then Glaze for Harassment coming around the back and able to take out a couple metal extractors. This Nicely done. is uh, tripling uh, the army value of uh, Sigero, no? Yeah, but they're <laughs> economically on par, so as long as Sigero can keep Sprung from destroying them... And now we're caught up. As long as Sigero can keep Sprung from destroying them, then Sigero should be able to deal... basically deal with this. Although Sigero's lost a bit of economy, they need to build round back. They are doing so! Rebuilding, getting their metal extractors built up again. And nice glaive distraction around the hammers. The hammers can rain down fire, soften things up while glaives are actually distracting the ravagers and dealing the damage that needs to be dealt. Ah, oh, but the slashers coming in here, that there's scorches I mean coming in there. It's not what they need. It's just just too much economy and production behind this attack. No, Sprung unfortunately Yeah, Sprung unfortunately has too much build up metal value. Like, the Ravagers are taking a lot of damage, but they are going to take out the... Yeah, there's the factory gone. And, unfortunately, that factory's a little too forward, and Sigero throws in the that towel. GG. So Sprung is the one tied for fourth with Nimor, not Sigero. Okay. Oh, whoops, I forgot to show that off. I'm sorry, guys, you didn't get to see any of that. <laughs> Maybe I'll just cut that out of the YouTube video, and just, just cut it at the end before I switch over. Hey, I got rid of the curse where I don't show a match on, like, a match that was a minute of actual match to show. Yay. I always do that once a tournament. Once a tournament, I miss switching over to the match. Ah, that was the only match remaining, too. So, yeah. Got that out of the way in the least painful way possible. So now we have a tie for fourth. Okay, so Iken, so Kshatra won against Ikens, Klon won against Stewart, so 2-3 on both of them. But yeah, Nimor and Sprung are tied for fourth. And I don't even know if there's a tiebreaker between the two that's going to make a difference.
All right. Well, according to the tiebreakers, Nemor is higher. But yeah, we're going to have a tiebreaker. Because that's how it's generally done. Have any more in Sprung fought so far? Hmm. No, Interesting. So. Nemor and Sprang have never encountered each other. Oh, what the heck? So there is a tie between Nemor and. Well. Beldas could have been in this time. Potentially, yeah. But it'll be Nemor and Sprung. That's how it goes. <sighs> so... To recap, once this is done, this double elimination thing, or sorry, the, the tiebreaker, once that's done, top four will move on to the last, to the double elimination tournament. And then once that happens, then the tournament will be over. But yeah, for I mean, for anyone who's not in top five, the tournament's over. Thank you for playing. Oh, okay, never mind. Sprung is actually going to be accepting the Buchholz score, so yeah, it's going to be top four. So Nemo goes through. Yeah, Sprong accepts the accepts that, doesn't really care for a tiebreaker. Alright, so that That works. I mean it is a pretty clear tiebreaker win, but yeah. Uh thanks to the buckles. All right, great. So that is going to be the double elimination tournament starting when it does. I don't know when that'll be. I think there'll be a small break. All right, so that is that. So out of the Swiss tournament, Shetrick, Christus, and Feltas were clearly in the lead, although, like you said, Feltas might have, if they lost against Orphelius, been contested for fourth. And then Nemor as well. Surprise, but haven't really seen them before. Good job, though. Got far. I want to see how they do in double elimination. And then... I'm a bit surprised that Clone didn't do as well. As well as Orphelius. Clone and Orphelius, their performance surprises me. Although, so does Zigato in the opposite direction. I was very impressed with Zigato's play. I want to see them play more. Like, Nimon and Zagera, I hope they play more 1v1 after this, because they're... They did well. Especially looking at their history, they clearly don't play a huge amount of 1v1. They did well. All right, so we're going to so, be taking a short break. Okay. So let's, let's say <clears throat> point 25, point 20, 30. It looks like it'll be 15 minutes or so. I think I want to start it at, 30, uh, I want to say 7.30, but 7.30 local time. What's that? In, Whatever, your XX. I guess 3.30. I think it's 330 UTC. I'm trying to remember. All right, so we're going to be coming. We're going to be leaving for about 15 minutes, and just stay tuned.
after this will be the double elimination bracket. So we'll be back shortly. See you then. Yep.